Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial and this week we're going to be creating a terrain rendering process and rendering ourselves a simple flat terrain. So, a terrain is actually pretty similar to any other entity, it's just made out of a model, which is a mesh of vertices and a texture. But the difference is that a terrain has a very regular layout of vertices, making it relatively easy to generate in the code, instead of having to create it in some 3D modelling software. Our terrains are always going to be set out like this, made out of a regular grid of vertices. The vertices are always spaced out equally along the horizontal axes, so from above the terrain it will always look like this. Then, to add some hills or mountains or any other kind of height to the terrain, we just have to give each vertex its own individual height. There are many techniques that we can use to generate the heights for each vertex, and we'll be covering some of these techniques in future tutorials, but for this week we're just going to keep it simple and set all the heights to zero, producing a completely flat terrain. The world is then going to be made up of a grid of terrain tiles like this one here. All of the terrains will be the same size and they will all have the same number of vertices along each edge of the terrain. Each terrain has its own position in the grid, which determines the terrain's position in the world. So let's get into the code and create a package for all of the terrain code that we're going to be doing in this episode. So in this new package we're going to create a class called terrain which will represent a terrain in our game and we're now going to create two final static variables which are going to be the same for all terrains one is that size variable I was mentioning earlier and I'm going to set that to 800 and the second is an int constant which is the number of vertices along each side of the terrain and I'm going to set that to 128 but you can set them to whatever you want then we need an x and a z position in the world and of course the terrain is also going to have a model which is going to be the actual terrain mesh and it's also going to have a texture of course to texture the model much like an entity really so let's now create a constructor for the terrain this is going to take in those grid uh, positions the grid coordinates in the world that I was talking about a minute ago it's also going to take in the loader so we can load up the model when we've created it and it's going to take in the texture that's going to be texturing this terrain and the raw model we're actually going to generate ourselves in this class. So we have to work out the x position and that is going to be the grid uh, x multiplied by the size of the terrain and the same for the z position that should be fairly obvious. Now to generate the terrain I've actually got a load of code copied because we're going to be just redoing this in a few tutorials time so it's not really necessary for you to know what's going on here but all I'm doing is generating a completely flat terrain that should look something like this. Then let's create the model by calling generate terrain and that will take in the loader. Now we just need some getters and uh, just getters actually so select getters we don't need one for the size and the vertex count so just leave the others there and there we go uh, that is pretty much the terrain class done so at the moment a terrain is looking pretty similar to an entity it's got a model it's got a texture and it's got a position in the world it's basically just an entity um, so we could actually render it using the renderer class that we've got at the moment and the static shader but in the future, our terrains are going to need some slightly different rendering requirements, such as uh, multi-texturing and tiling. Uh, and so we're going to have to create another shader program for rendering the terrains, and therefore we're also going to have to create a new renderer class, especially for terrains. So let's now go into our current renderer class, because now that we're going to be adding another renderer, we need to make this one specific more specific to just rendering entities so let's call it the entity renderer so we don't get confused and now this prepare method here this should actually be done before all of the renderers it's it's not specific to entity rendering so we're going to put it into the master renderer class and then we can just call it here at the top uh, also the projection projection matrix is something that all renderers are going to need so let's copy that and cut it out of the NC renderer class let's also delete that and we don't need to call that method in here anymore so we're going to create 
the projection matrix in the master renderer just once and then we'll pass it to all the renderers that need it and so we need to create a parameter in the constructor for the entity renderer so let's paste that create projection matrix down here and we're also going to need those uh, constants from the entity renderer class so let's copy them cut them out and paste them up the top of the master renderer and let's now create the projection matrix in here so it only has to be created once instead of once for every uh, renderer and we're now actually going to need a constructor for the master renderer so that when the master renderer constructor is called the projection matrix can be set up and it can then be passed to all of the renderers at the moment we just have the one entity renderer but soon we're going to have the terrain renderer as well which is why we're doing all of this so let's call the create projection matrix then we have to set up the entity renderer I don't know why that's not private uh, we actually have to set that up in the constructor now because we have to do it after the projection matrix has been created so renderer equals new entity renderer and that takes in the shader and now the projection matrix as well and last thing in the entity renderer constructor let's take out these two lines to do with culling back faces and we can put that in the constructor of the master renderer as well now the next thing that we need to do is to go into the source file for our project into the shaders and we need to duplicate the two shader codes so the vertex shader will duplicate that and we'll call it terrain vertex shader and do the same for the fragment shader copy and paste it and call that terrain fragment shader because we're going to need uh, a new shader program especially for the terrains if we now refresh our source folder you should be able to see those new shader code files appearing so let's now create a terrain shader class just like we have the static shader class we need to create one for the terrain shader uh, and that's going to extend shader program of course and now what we're actually going to do is we're just going to shamelessly copy and paste all of the static shader code because at the moment the two shader programs are identical because we just copy and pasted the the files don't forget to rename the constructor and also put in the correct file names here so terrain vertex shader dot text and terrain fragment shader dot text so that's the terrain shader program set up we now need to have a terrain renderer so let's create a new class in the render engine called terrain renderer uh, this is going to need a a terrain shader so let's have a private terrain shader attribute then let's create a constructor here which is going to take in the shader and of course the projection matrix just like the other renderer class the entity renderer these these are going to be pretty similar because at the moment terrains are pretty similar to entities but in the future they're going to become uh, a bit different so in the constructor we want to start the shader up just so we can load up the projection matrix and then we can stop the shader again now let's create the render method for terrains and this is going to take a list take in a list of all the terrains that we want to render and what we're going to do in here is we're going to loop through that list of terrains and then for each terrain we're going to prepare it and then render it and this stuff we can actually once again I know there's a lot of copy and pasting in this episode but bear with it uh, we're going to copy and paste these three methods from the entity renderer class as I said I just want to get this working first and then we'll do the terrain specific stuff in the future so let's rename these methods to something more appropriate so we can rename this to load model matrix and this is obviously going to now take in a terrain and not an entity so take in a terrain called terrain then instead of taking in the entity position we need to take in uh, a new vector and that's going to be made up of terrain.getx and then the y position is just going to be zero and then terrain.getz 
then all of these rotations are just going to be zero. We don't want to rotate our terrains, that would be crazy. Uh, and then the entity dot get scale, that's just going to be one. The size of our terrains we're always going to have as the same. So this one here, let's call it prepared terrain, and that is also going to take in a terrain. The raw model we can get by doing terrain dot get model uh, texture can be got by doing terrain dot get texture, and the rest is are oh, just this down here to change. Let's just put the texture in here in the texture dot get ID, and that should all now be working for terrains. So we can now use these methods for each terrain. So in the render method we loop through the terrains and for each terrain we prepare the terrain that binds the model and binds the texture. Then we load the model matrix for that terrain. Uh, and after we've rendered it, which we'll put in that gap that I haven't filled in yet, we're going to unbind the terrain or textured model. Uh, so now we just need that render method, which I can't remember. So I'll copy and paste that as well. And let's put that in here. And we just have to change this one bit. Um, so that's terrain.getModel dot get vertex count. So that's the render class set up for the terrain. So let's now create a render process for that in the master renderer. So we need to create the terrain renderer in here and we also need uh, the terrain shader to be set up in this class. So let's create uh, an attribute for terrain renderer and terrain shader. The terrain shader we can uh, initialize straight away because it doesn't have anything in the constructor but the terrain renderer we have to do in the constructor of the master renderer because it has to wait until the projection matrix has been set up and then it can take in the terrain shader and that projection matrix. Now in the render method, the, the master render method we're going to do pretty much the same that we do for the entity renderer. We're going to start the shader first and then we have to load up the light to this shader program. We've already loaded it up and rendered for the entities but we now have to do exactly the same for the terrain. So we load the light, we load the view matrix, now we can call the render method which is going to take in a list of terrains which we haven't created yet uh, but I'll just call it terrains for now and then we have to stop the terrain shader. So let's now create this list of terrains that we want to render each frame. So I'll create a list called terrains. That's a new array list, terrain. Uh, and we can put that into the terrain renderer method. And let's not forget to clear it each frame, otherwise it will just build up and up and up and your frame rates will drop very quickly. Let's now create a way to add terrains to that list of terrains that you want to render and I'll call this method process terrain but really all it has to do is to add a terrain to that list of terrains. Uh, and one last thing, let's not forget to clean up the terrain shader once the game has been closed. So almost done, let's go into the main game loop and let's actually create ourselves some terrains so that we can test out the terrain renderer. So I'll create a terrain called terrain, it's going to be at 0, 0, grid position 0, 0, it takes in the loader and it takes in, takes in a texture and I've got a grass texture which I'm going to load up and put in. Uh, so loader.load texture grass and I'm actually going to create two terrains here so that you can see how they connect together. So I'm going to put this right next to the other one in the grid at 1, 0, and the rest is going to be the same. Then I have to process these two uh, terrains every frame. We need to add them, send them off to be rendered. Uh, so process both the terrains, and then they'll both be rendered in that renderer.render method. So let's run that, and there you go. You can see that there is a big terrain, or there's two terrains, being rendered nicely here. But you can also see that the texture looks pretty awful. I mean, it's very stretched. It's obviously had to be stretched over the whole terrain, uh, and so that's a bit of a problem. The texture looks so bad because the terrain is so huge, and so the texture has to be stretched out over the whole terrain.
So there are two things that you can do to solve this. You could either find a massive texture file of a really, really high resolution image so that it still looks good even when it's stretched out over a massive terrain, but that is obviously an awful idea. The better solution is something called tiling, which is where you render the same texture multiple times over the surface of the terrain. That way the texture doesn't have to be stretched and you can still use a fairly small texture. And this is really, really easy to achieve. All we have to do is to increase the texture coordinates. Once a texture coordinate goes over 1, OpenGL just starts again from 0. So having texture coordinates like this is exactly the same as having texture coordinates like this, except much easier to implement. So let's do that in the code now. If we go into the vertex shader, we can increase those texture coordinates, uh, the terrain vertex shader, make sure. Uh, so when we create the past texture coordinates, all we need to do is multiply the input texture coordinates by 40. That should multiply all the texture coordinates by 40, and oh, and uh, there you go. You can see that the, the uh, texture is looking much more high definition now, and that's because it's been tiled over the whole terrain many, many times. And if you just go ahead and add a few entities around the place, a few trees and rocks and stuff, you can actually already create yourself quite a nice little 3D world. And that is it for this week. I'm sorry that there was so much copying and pasting in this episode, but I thought it would be better to get the terrain rendering set up and working first before we start adding the terrain specific rendering features, instead of trying to create a terrain renderer from scratch and it taking 3 episodes or so before we get anything working. If you haven't seen yesterday's devlog video for my game, then a link to that is on the screen now, and this week I was working on the world editor. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook and Twitter, links are in the description below. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video, do subscribe if you haven't already, have an amazing week, and I will see you all next time.